Good day. I'm going to introduce you to my good friend Bob. What a great what a great term for the ball that you put on the end of a pendulum. I sometimes wish my name was Bob. I think that's great. I love pendulums and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can find the gravitational potential energy that is stored inside of a pendulum based on how far you pull it back to the side, which is kind of a a, a trickier sort of situation that you may see in your physics class. So here's the problem I'm going to go through with you. A pendulum bob has a mass of two kilograms and it's fixed from the ceiling right up here uh, by a string of length one meter. So your string is one meter long. If the bob is pulled 0.75 meters to one side, here I'm pointing, pulling it to the right, but I don't think it makes a difference if you pull it to the left. What's the potential energy with respect to its equilibrium position? Its equilibrium position is right here. Okay, this is where the equilibrium position would be. Uh, down here at the bottom if you're just to let it go uh, and eventually friction slows it down to that point. Okay, so, you know, typically finding kinetic energy or rather potential energy that's gravitational is not that hard. You just have to um, really know two pieces of information uh, about the object you're dealing with. Um, you have to know its mass. Okay, we got that in the question, no big deal. The acceleration due to gravity, the gravitational field strength, well, we know that on Earth, and then the height. And the height is a tricky part for this question. We've got um, the height given right here, and so that's how high off of the equilibrium position the ball's been raised. But we're not given that, we're gonna have to calculate it. What we are given is the length of the string. Now, I've written that in here as the, um, the, dis uh, the difference in distance between uh, its equilibrium position and this top part here where it's anchored to the ceiling as one meter. But you know what, the thing that you often have to come up with yourself is that this distance is also one meter, right along here, okay? So this triangle that's been drawn in with dotted lines here, okay, this triangle has a hypotenuse of one meter, the same as the length of the string. And that is gonna be really, I think, our key to solving this problem. So let's go through and see if we can figure it out. Well, we're gonna need to know the height. And we know that this distance from equilibrium to the ceiling is one meter. Uh, if we wanna know the height, what we really want is this distance here, the, the, the y component of the triangle. Uh, we know the x component of the triangle, it's 0.75 meters, and we know the hypotenuse. So let's find this y component. To do that, we're gonna use some trigonometry. So let's see here, which trig ratio could I use? Well, I don't have any angles, so maybe I'll stick to the Pythagorean formula. Uh, the Pythagorean formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now a lot of students will get tri uh, tripped up at this stage. They will think that uh, a and um, uh, b are 0.75 and 1. This isn't b. This is a hypotenuse in a triangle. This 1 meter is going to be side c. So we want to make sure we put that in on side c. And it doesn't matter which one you call um, 0.75 meters. It could be A or B. As long as you're not calling it C, you're okay. Then the other side you have left over here is what we're going to have for our Y component. Uh, I guess I'm calling it B. So now I go through and I solve. Now the big thing is, here's the, where the mistake comes, right? If you put it in the wrong spot here, then you're going to put it into your calculator wrong. So a lot of students would go 1 squared plus 0.75 squared, and then square root that. That is wrong. Don't do that. It doesn't even make sense, really, when you think about it. How can it drop through, um, or how can it be at that distance? That's longer than the piece of string. Okay, we're going to go through and do it the correct way. 1 squared minus 0.75 squared. We're subtracting because we're moving this 0.75 squared term to the other side. To move it to the other side, we've got to subtract 0.75 meters squared. Okay, so let's figure out B. So 1 minus 0.75 squared, and I got to square root that, is going to be about 0.66 meters. All right, so this is 0 0.66 meters roughly from the ceiling to this point right here. Now we want the height, okay? This is, this is sort of the height when it's pulled back. We want the height that is dropped through. So to find delta H, to find the height that we're going to use in our potential energy calculation right here, it's going to be one meter. Subtract our 0.66 meters. Now I'm, I'm going to leave that in my calculator, right? I'm not going to actually go and just type in 0.66. I'm going to subtract that whole answer there. It's going to give me about 0.34. 
And again, I'll round it at the end. So now I can do my potential energy calculation. Shouldn't be too bad. Two kilograms is the mass. 9.81 meters per second squared is the field strength. And I'm going to multiply that by, sorry, I ran out of space, 0 0.34 meters. And this will give us our gravitational potential energy. So as long as you're careful with your Pythagorean formula step to 2 sig dig 6.6 .6 joules, then you can get through this type of problem without too much trouble either. And now that you know its potential energy, you could even convert that to kinetic energy at this point and find its speed and do lots of other interesting things with it. Uh, for more information on pendulums, I love pendulums and, and energy, you can check out my website, ldindustries.ca.